Hey everybody, um, I have no idea why my flash is on, maybe it'll help in reading this, um, but, so, I'm gonna be doing a comparison tonight of some of the most amazing things you might have ever heard in your life, so, one is the Chronicles of Jeremiel, I'm gonna compare, uh, text in this to something written in the Super Gospel, and you can tell... Whenever you have this come up, which it's come up for me in the past, if somebody asks you, uh, which my boss, who's 27, I'm 36, um, he asked me today, he brought this up when I mentioned somebody else in my office, my new job, uh, talked, uh, had mentioned Flat Earth. And so I um, guess he was interested in that. And then that spurred off into a conversation about just heaven and hell. And if angels are real or if God's real, things like that. And he just kept asking me all this stuff. And I'm like, well, I didn't realize that was going to happen because my boss is 27, but he's very, um, uh, he just, he has a commanding presence, like almost like a captain of a ship would back in the day. He just has a commanding presence. Um, and so speaking to him on these types of things, I was like wondering like if he was going to fire me or something like that, but I don't think that's where it was going. But I guess when I got home, my uh, wife said that her and the kids had been praying for me because it was uh, raining out today and I do door to door sales at my new job. So um, I'll go into an explanation on that in a different video because something happened with that. God told me something. So um, just I'm going to read this to you. It's just I can't even describe it to you i've just been reading all these right now to do an another video and this all came up so let me share this all right so this is page 156 it's a description of hell okay but there's going to go into way other crazy things all right so i'm just going to do this so you can pause and read this so you can pause and read on your own time and then i'm going to read it out loud all right this is the description of Gehenna, hell. Who can stand before its might? Who can withstand the fury of its wrath? Abahu opened his homily with the verse, Alukwa has two daughters called Hab, Hab R. Eleazar, says that these are the two bands of angels that stand at the gates of Gehenna and say, come, come. Why is it called Gehenna, Valley of Wailing? Because the voice of its wailing traverses the world from one end to another. And why is it called Tofte enticer because all enter therein enticed by their evil inclination. Our Joe Hannon began his homily with the verse passing through the valley of weeping. They make it a valley of springs. This means to say that the sinner confesses just as the leper confesses, and he says, I have committed such a. Hold on one second. I have committed such and such a transgression in that place on that day in the presence of so and so in that society. Hell has three gates, one at the sea, the other in the wilderness, and the third in the inhabited part of the world. If, did you hear what that just said? There are three gates to hell. I don't know if you have ever read that before, but that's what this says. So, hell has three gates, one at the sea, the other in the wilderness. So, it says one is in the sea. And I've heard people like um, Peniel Nagunde. If you look him up on YouTube, he speaks all his videos, which come out daily are talking about the underwater kingdom where there are mermaid people that live under the ocean that are leftovers from when God judged Atlantis. And if you think I'm nuts about what I'm talking about, just think about how big the ocean is compared to how big land is. And then go look for movies that actually have come out where they break through a barrier in the great uh, bear, in the Great Barrier Reef, no, what's the the um, Marianas Trench or whatever, and it goes below this thing, and it goes into an underwater cavern. And even study, you know, Hollow Earth theory and all, what the Nazis were doing and stuff like that. You can hear all, you know, learn all about what I'm talking about. But that's beside the point. I could go into multiple other videos about um, that that topic. But it's interesting that they say one of those gates is in the ocean. So. Um, One's in the sea, the other in the wilderness, and the third in the inhabited part of the world. That's odd. That at the sea is alluded to in Jonah, out of the belly of Sheol cried I, and thou heardest my voice. That of the wilderness is alluded to in numbers. So they and all that appertained to them went down alive into Sheol, and that in the inhabited portion of the world in Isaiah... 
saith the Lord, whose fire is in Zion and his furnace in Jerusalem. Oh my gosh. So that just gave you the answer. So the one that is in the, the gate of hell that is in the sea is alluded to in Jonah. The one that is in the wilderness, that one is alluded to in Numbers. And then the last is is in a city and it tells you what city it's in Jerusalem. So the, the actual third gate to hell is in Jerusalem. That's very interesting. I didn't even read that yet. So we're learning together tonight. Um, five different kinds of fires are in hell. One devours and absorbs another absorbs and does not devour while another again, neither devours nor absorbs. There is further fire to, fi there is further fire, a devouring fire. There are coal, Coals big as mountains and coals big as hills and coals huge like unto the Dead Sea and coals like huge stones. There are rivers of pitch and sulfur flowing and fuming and seething. The punishment of the sinner is thus. The angels of destruction throw him to the flame of hell. This opens its wide, mouth wide and swallows him as, as it is said. Therefore, she hath enlarged her desire and opened her mouth without measure and their glory and their multitude and their prompt and he, and their pomp and he that rejoices among them descends into it this all happens to him who has not done one single pious act which would incline the balance towards mercy whilst that man who possesses many virtues and good actions and learning and who has suffered much he is saved from hell as it is said yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear, fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff shall comfort me thy rod means the suffering and thy staff signifies the law i did not know that either the eyes of the wicked shall fail <clears throat> and refuge is perished from them and their hope shall be the giving up of the ghost that means a body which is never destroyed and whose soul enters a fire which is never extinguished of these speaks also the verse for their worm sh shall not die neither shall their fire be quenched Joshua, son of Levi, said, Once upon a time I was walking on my way when I met the prophet Elijah, which we know is one of the two witnesses, Elijah the Tishbite. He said to me, Would you like to be brought to the gate of hell? And I answered, Yes. So he showed me men hanging by their hair, and he said to me, These are the men that let their hair grow to adorn themselves for sin. Others were hanging by their eyes. These were they that followed their eyes to sin and did not set God before them. Others were hanging by their noses. These were they that perfumed themselves to sin. Others were hanging by their tongues. These were they that had slandered. Others were hanging by their hands. These were they that had stolen and robbed. Others were hanging ignominiously. These were they that had committed adultery. Others were hanging by their feet. These were they that had run to sin. He showed me women hanging by their breasts. These were they that uncovered their breasts before men to make them sin. He showed me further men that were fed on fiery coals. These were they that had blasphemed. Others were forced to eat bitter gall. These were they that had that ate on fast days. He showed me further men eating fine sand. They are forced to eat it, and their teeth are broken. And the Almighty says to them, O ye sinners, when you used to eat that which you stole and robbed, it was sweet in your mouth. Now you are not able to eat even this. And it is said, Thou hast broken the teeth of the wicked. He showed me further men who are thrown from the fire to snow and from snow to fire. These were they that had abused the poor and who came to them for assistance. I'm going to pause right there. This part right here is actually confirmed also in the Irish Apocrypha in two accounts of men who died. One was a semi-decent guy. The other was not a good guy and he was rich and fat and he, he had a bad time in hell for you know a good amount of time. He went through all the different stages of hell until he came to where Satan is, the worst part of hell, and that's when he was finally saved and God showed him that he has to change his life and he came back to life. So this part right here, the, the fire to snow, people think hell is just fire. It's not. It's like, it's like snow, ice, and like the people that went there when they came back, they actually, one guy, he would go, he was like a priest or something, and he went and like went in icy water and it would just stay there for hours and he wouldn't even go like and dry off. He would keep his frozen clothes on just because, you know, when people would ask him why he's doing that, he's like, I've seen colder 
because he was talking about when he lived in when he went to hell he said he's like i've seen colder and it, he just said it humbly like i'm not even cold like you have no idea it was a humbling thing that he used to do so i've seen a first-hand account of that i can um if you guys um that's also at um sacred word publishing <clears throat> this book is too this is at sacred word publishing so um and that's both of these books were um are through Zen Garcia's website. And everything that I'm talking about right now is on Zen Garcia's YouTube channel, which is um, Endeavor Freedom and Zen Garcia, I think, are the two channels. They both have, like, the same videos. They just have different, like, covers on them. So anyway, so let's go back to the text where thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water. He showed me others who were driven from mountain to mountain as a shepherd leads the flock from one mountain to another. Of these speaks the verse. They are appointed as a flock for Sheol. Death shall be their shepherd and the upright shall have the dominion over them in the morning and their shall and their form shall be for Sheol to consume that there be no habitation for it. For every sin, there is an angel appointed to obtain the explanation thereof. One comes first and obtains his explanation, then follows another, and so on until this, all the sins are expiated. As with a debtor who has come, as with a debtor who has many creditors and who come before the king to claim their debts, and the king delivers him to them, he says, "Take him and divide him between yourselves." So also is the soul delivered in hell to cruel angels, and they divide it among themselves. Three descend to hell forever. And do not ascend any more. The man who commits adultery, who blames his neighbor in public, and who is guilty of perjury. Others say those who seek honor for themselves by slandering their neighbors and those who make intrigues between man and wife in order to create strife among them. On the eve of the Sabbath, the sinners are led to two mountains of snow where they are left until the end of the Sabbath. When they are taken back from there and brought again to their former places, an angel comes and thrusts them back to their former place in hell. Pause for... Anyone who wants to pause and read this? Um, Foreign place in hell. Some of them take, however, snow and hide it in their armpits to cool them during the six days of the week. But the Almighty says unto them, Woe unto you who steal even in hell. As it is said, Drought and heat consume the snow waters in Sheol they sin. That means to say they even they sin even in hell. Every twelve months the sinner are burned to ashes, and the wind disperses them and carries their ashes under the feet of the just. As it is said, And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. Afterwards the soul is returned to them, and they come out black as black as... Oh, hold on a second, guys. My flash just died. That's all right. We're good to go. Um... Yeah, I have 49 minutes left on my phone. Sorry if you can't see the text that great now with the shadow, but um, hold on. All right, so I didn't even know that people even sin in hell. That's crazy. I didn't even read that. I've never heard that, like, noticed that verse in the Bible before. Because, <clears throat> like, don't get me wrong, people. If you if you read my channel, you watch my videos, and you don't know who I am, um, I am... Uh, my name is Jared Allen. I was baptized in Nashville, New Hampshire at Grace Community Church probably five years ago. Um, I don't go to church now. I just read the Bible all the time. I read texts like this and anything that is confirming of the of the Bible, of the canon, of the Old and New Testament. I personally believe and I have <clears throat> heard, and you can go read for yourself, a book called The Tuning Fork, which a man just recently wrote, and he found this information where Isaiah, being 66 books, <clears throat> I mean 66 chapters, proves that the Bible was meant to be 66 books, and I agree with that, <clears throat> but I think that God allowed that to happen just like he, was, he allowed himself to be taken in the Garden of Gethsemane. I believe he... <clears throat> allowed the canon to become what it was so that those who want to <clears throat> learn more about him and want the knowledge of his childhood and all the things that have been taken away from his children, like like Jesus said, curse the scribes for they have hidden the keys of knowledge. You know, like they, <clears throat> he said, also my children are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So, Excuse me one second. <clears throat> so it's clear that Jesus is telling us that there is knowledge that is that was taken away. There was something that was taken away. And I, I've said multiple times, Matthew 13, 33, 
I think that, yeah, 1333 is the verse that is, is the parable of the woman with the three lumps. And the woman is wisdom, which is the Holy Spirit. And she put into bread, which is God's word, three lumps, three dispensations of scripture. It's not a new dispensation. It's just an old one that went away. And now they're coming back because they were dug up, just like Jesus raised from the dead on the third day, which is now the third millennia because he died 2,000 years ago. And this is the third day. The third millennia just started after the year 2000. That's what it's talking about. And what I'm reading to you right now is a portion of those things. I'm not saying that this is specifically scripture, but do you see every single paragraph here and all the ones I've written before, um, read before? It's telling you information and then it backs it up with scripture. And it doesn't tell you the verse, the um, chapter and verse right here, but you can go look this up for yourself. Go Google these verses, the, all these different ones and find out what verses they are. And you can tell that this is, this is what it is. This is the information that they took out. All these things, all these pieces, all these verses and, and stories from people that have lived and, and died, you know, worshiping Jesus Christ and learning about him. They gave their lives to write these things down. And we would be ignorant. We would just be ignorant if we don't at least read them and see what they say to confirm whether they're true or not. A person that just dismisses something without investigation as a fool, according to the Bible. So let's read on. All right, bear with me. I just want to read this, especially since we're moving on into the end times right now. I just want everyone, no matter where you end up in these next few years or days or months or whatever, um, whether you believe in a, pre post you know whenever you believe that we're leaving this earth to be with the lord jesus christ whether you are righteous enough to be called the bride whether you're left here and you have to give your life for jesus christ and you then become part of the righteous those martyrs for jesus christ whatever the case is for your life whether you don't even believe what i am saying right now if if you don't I pray that at least you can see the similarities of the text and maybe in time this will come to you as well because I didn't always understand anything that I'm talking about right now. I'm not actually that intelligent. I had like a 2.4 GPA and <laughs> and my girlfriend did my homework. So, um, yeah. Uh, let's just read this because I just, I just love this portion. Um, every 12 month the sinners are burned to ashes and the wind disperses them and carries those ashes under the feet of the just as it is said and ye shall tread down the wicked for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet afterwards the soul is returned to them and they come out black as the blackness of a pot and they acknowledge the justice of their punishment and say thou hast rightly sentenced us and rightly judged us with thee is righteousness and with us shame as it is with us to today there are five kinds there are five kinds of punishment in hell, and Isaiah the son of Amos saw them all. He entered the first compartment and saw there two men carrying pails full of water on their shoulders, and they pour that water into a pit, which, however, never fills. Isaiah said to God, O thou who unveilest all that is hidden, unveil to me the secret of this. And the Spirit of the Lord answered, These are men who co coveted the property of their neighbors, and this is their punishment. He entered the second compartment, and he saw two men hanging by their tongues. And he said, O thou who unveilest the hidden, reveal to me the secret of this. And he answered, These are the men who slandered, therefore they are thus punished. He entered the third compartment, and he saw there men hanging by their organs. He said, O... Thou who un unveilest the hidden, reveal to me the secret of this. Pause for anyone who wants to read this later. Here we go. Okay. And he answered, These are the men who neglected their own wives and committed adultery with the daughters of Israel. He entered the fourth compartment and saw their women hanging by their breasts. And he said, O thou who unveilest the hidden, reveal to me the secret of this. And he answered, These are the women who uncovered their hair and rent their veil and sat in the open marketplace to suckle their children in order to attract the gaze of men and to make them sin. Therefore, they are punished for thus, or punished thus. He entered the fifth compartment and found it full of smoke. This one's interesting. 
There were all the princes, chiefs, and great men, and Pharaoh, the wicked, presides over them and watches at the gate of hell. And he said unto them, Why did you not learn from me when I was in Egypt? Thus he sits there and watches at the gates of hell. Interesting. There are seven compartments in hell, and in each of them are seven thousand rooms, and in each room seven thousand windows. In each window recess there are seven thousand vessels filled with venom, all destined for slanderous writers and iniquitous judges. It is to that that Solomon alludes when he says, And thou mournest at thy latter end when thy flesh and thy body are consumed. The other nations, however, and the idolaters are punished in seven compartments of hell, in each compartment for a twelve month, and the river Denor floweth from beneath the throne of glory and falleth over the heads of the sinners, and the sound travels from the end of the world to the other. All these punishments are prepared for the apostates, for those who deny the resurrection of the dead, for the renegade slanderers and traitors of these, King Solomon said, their end shall be as bitter as wormwood. None of these are saved unless they repent, acquire learning, and perform pious deeds. That, see right there what that says? There is a major rift in all doctrine right now that says that, oh, if you just get saved, you could just do whatever you want, just repent every day, and you can just be however you want to be. Okay, the boy who recently had a vision of heaven in Jerusalem and in Israel and is having quite a stir in the rabbinical community, if that's what you want to call it, um, or the Jewish community, um, because of what he saw. And what he said is that there's a scale and there's lights that flash according to the good and bad things you've done in your life on this scale. And the angels, they cheer or they boo you basically based on the things that you did in your life and you're judged and they're watching you. Now, this right here says that just like it does in that video, are saved unless they repent, they acquire learning. So what is, that's Torah, that's learning God's, God's law and perform pious deeds. This is what that kid said that when Jesus comes down and splits the Mount of Olives, that He's going to allow people to retreat and be saved. But it's odd what he says. He says that they smell, Jesus smells the people. So Jesus can actually smell whether you're doing these things. If you repented because you don't smell like sin or something because he cleansed you with his blood. If you acquire learning and read the Torah, so he knows what your mind is thinking and perform pious deeds. If you're helping the poor and the widows and the orphans, which these things that he says right here, these are the things that he's talking about when he says he wants you to fast and he wants you to pray and he wants you to live a righteous life and things like that, which is explained in the epistle of Barnabas. All these things that people say, like the food laws, And like observing the Sabbath and all these things. Yes, you can observe the Sabbath and things like that. And if you want to be a vegetarian, go be a vegetarian. But the food laws and all of that were examples of people that pretend to be religious or pretend to love God and they don't. He used birds as an analogy because all cultures and peoples will understand things that relate to birds and fields and trees and things like that. That's why he spoke in parables so that even though our languages were corrupted during the Tower of Babel, we still can understand the gospel and the truth of Jesus Christ. And so let's read the rest of this um, going down. Um, But at the end, the Almighty will have pity on all his creatures, as it is said, for I will not contend for either forever, neither will I... Be always wroth, for the spirit shall pass before me and the souls which I have made. Did you just hear what that says? Did you just hear what that says? So, but at the end, the Almighty will have pity on, look at, on all his creatures, as it is said, for I will not contend forever, neither will I always be wroth, for the spirit shall pass before me and the souls which I have made. Do you get that? Okay, I believe that it goes into it more in here, but I'm going to stop right there for a second. I'm just going to stop right there. We're going to get into this part here, there, besides in every compartment, different um, 
and this is talking about hell, but let me go back over here. So I want to talk about that portion really quickly. What that's saying is that at the end of time, after their souls have been in hell, and I think God rules has a video on this, that hell, like the forever, when it says that, it's like when we say forever, like I was standing in line forever, it's a sim similar like term, like it, it means an indeterminate amount of time. It seemed like a long time, but it's indeterminate. So when it says forever in the Bible, the way that originally was translated is, is something like a, a certain amount of time that is very long, whether that's a thousand years or something like that. If you can even imagine being in hell's torment for even a second, never mind a thousand years, that's what we're talking about. Okay. So that's what it says there. I won't, I won't leave them in hell forever. And then this is what it says in the super gospel on page 361, which <clears throat> I gave the other two copies I had away, which had an old, an old cover, which I like the picture on, but this picture is pretty cool too. Um, this is one, um, like an old painting. I think when Jesus was like ascending into heaven, <clears throat> when he came out of the grave and things like that, they always did pictures like that. It's pretty cool. Um, so this was uh, written by Robert Farrell. He took, <clears throat> hold on, I'm going to show you what this is. No, nobody usually shows you the table of contents or whatever, but this is what it is. These are the abbreviations. Oh shoot. I just lost my place, but that's okay. Um, so these are the abbreviations of everything that went into this combination of the true gospel of Jesus Christ, like what actually happened to him from birth until he went back into uh, heaven and even after. So these are all the things and these are the abbreviations for all of them. Okay, so I'm going to come back and read this in a moment, but just so you get an idea of what is in this book as far as content 1 Corinthians, 1 Peter, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Baruch, 2 Clement, 2 Ezra, 2 Peter, Acts of Andrew and Matthias, Acts of Andrew, Acts of John, Acts of Peter. Okay, first of all, how many disciples did Jesus have? 12. And there, then there were 70 like lesser disciples underneath them. And then they had their own disciples also. And John the Baptist had disciples and they all had disciples like if they were following after the truth and faith of Jesus Christ. So... These are what I'm talking about right now. So I forget where I left off, but um, Anaphora, Pilate, Apocalypse of Peter, the Arabic Infancy Gospel, the Latin Infancy Gospel, Ascension of Isaiah, which is super important. I don't know why that's not in the canon. I mean, you know, not in the Bible. I don't know why they would have taken that out except for Jesus wanted it to happen. But uh, the birth and nativity of Mary, the Clement of Alexandria, Clemente Homilus. There's a lot in Latin, a lot of Latin texts. In this, um, the Decinius, Decinius Latin A, Decinius Latin B, Dialogue of the Savior, Dialogue of Justin from Typho, Egerton Gospel, Epistle of Abgar, Epistle of the Apostles, Gospel of the Ebionites, Gospel of the Egyptians, Gospel of the Hebrew, Gospel of Mary Magdalene, Gospel of Nazareans, the Gospel of Nicodemus, which I speak about all the time, which, ha which has um, Jesus when he descended into uh, Hades to save the saints that were in there waiting for him to come and die on the cross. Um, the Gospel of Philip. The Gospel of Nicodemus is also called the Acts of Pilate a lot of times because it was a historical document as well that was written by Pilate. Um, and then it was like combined with like text that Nicodemus wrote in, as well. Um and also the Gospel of Thomas, which is super important to, um, like, it's all Jesus's quotes. Like, it's amazing. Gospel of Thomas, uh, Greek fragments, history of Joseph the Carpenter, super important. Ignatius of Antioch, the Ephesians, infancy Gospel of Thomas, all of Jesus's early years, infancy Gospel, I mean, uh, Gospel of John, life of John the Baptist, Gospel of Luke, Gospel of Mark, Gospel of Matthew, the Ode to Solomon, Protoevangelion of James, which is super important. Papyrus, Oxyrhynchus. Gospel of Pseudo Matthew, Questions of Bartholomew, Gospel Material Preserved in the Quran, Book of Revelation, Apocalypse of John, Epistle of Paul to the Romans, Sibylline Oracles, The Secret Book of Mark, The Traditions of Matthias. Now, there's many, many people when you, I, obviously, you're going to say, oh, oh, you said Quran. Yeah. A lot of people don't realize that um, there's some time that Jesus may have gone into Arabia <laughs> and preached the gospel there as well. We have a lot of pieces missing from his actual ministry. So, um, you know, before anybody says, oh, it said Quran, yeah, give me a break. Like, <laughs> I'm not reading the actual Quran, although you could go read that and it doesn't make me, you know, a, a Muslim. But, you know, let's all be adults. So, 
the sinner's release from Hades. You can just pause the video and go look look these up for yourself what the abbreviations are for. Um, but obviously you can see Jude uh, 22 and 23 here. But as for their counterparts, those who are interested in justice and righteous deeds, holiness and truly upright thinking, angels will raise them from the burning stream and deliver them into the light, even to the carefree realm wherein lies the path of immortality of the Almighty God and the three springs of wine, honey, and milk. Then the world will belong to the same, belong to belong the same to all, with no walls or fences to divide them. It will then, of its own, bring forth fruit in a much greater abundance. People will live their lives as one, and wealth will be distributed evenly. In that place, there will be no rich or poor, neither despot nor slave. There will, moreover, exist at that time neither the common nor the eminent, neither sovereign nor head of state, for all will be the same level with one another. It will no longer be said that the night has fallen, or that something will happen tomorrow, or that something happened yesterday. Nor will there be days at all to think about, neither will there be any spring or summer, buying or selling, dusk or dawn. For he will make it all as one long day to all these his righteous ones, the eternal God who governs all, will grant them something further still. When they ask him to rescue mankind from the unquenchable fire and perpetual grinding of teeth, he will give them what they long for. Does anyone, did anyone just hear what I just said? Did anyone just hear me? Everybody who knows someone right now that they're worried about not going to heaven, keep preaching to them. Do not give up. There is still hope for them. And God forbid, if they do not listen to you, there is still further hope. Once you attain heaven, you can pray for them to be released. And it says it right here. And it coincides with what I just read in the Chronicles of Jeremiah, which you can go find out for yourself who he is, because when you find out, you will take him seriously. He's a scholar. And he will give them what they long for. And I say definitely that at that time, I would, I, okay, that, that is God talking. And I say definitely that, at that time, I will deliver out of torment whomsoever my righteous and elect ones should ask of me. Be compassionate to those who doubt, but others you must drag from the fire, despising even the garment that is tainted by the flesh. So they just put Paul in the parentheses there because that's what he's speaking about. And if anyone should cry to me in their affliction, and I will grant them to God, behold, he will himself pluck them from the undying fire and set them in another place." I've heard people that went to hell have that happen to them. They were plucked right up by God's hand. And then the guy was an atheist before and now he's not because he would start to bawl and cry and saying God plucked them right out of the fire. Just like it says a huge hand grabbed them. Behold, he will himself pluck them from the undying fire and set them in another place, even into another realm another eternal realm where they will live forever with the immortal ones. Then I will give my righteous and elect ones the precious baptism and the salvation for which they have pleaded with me. There, in that deep and abiding Akersian lake, that's where Michael is going to 